Hi, I'm Darlene Carmen. Julie Kitzenberger is a photographer and writer. She's a volunteer shelter cat photographer for the Peninsula Humane Society and SPCA. Also on the show is Karen Palmazano, a cat TLC volunteer from the shelter, and she brought a shelter cat for us to enjoy. Hey, welcome to the show. It's a pleasure. Hey, welcome. welcome. Thank you, Darlene. Now, Cat Snaps, that's like a division of your work. So you started out more in landscape photography. I okay. did, yes. And let's actually just see right up front uh, a few photos of your work, your landscapes. This is my signature landscaped image. This is El Capitan in Yosemite. I drove out during a heavy winter storm to Mariposa, stayed overnight with friends, and got up at 4 a.m. the next morning to drive into the valley. The conditions were perfect, beautiful snowfall, and a blue sky behind it. Wow, that's beautiful. Next. This is near Santa Rosa in the area called Windsor. I was out scouting one weekend looking for unusual shots in the wine country, and I saw that and had to stop. Beautiful. And the next one? Mm. My heart is in the Old West. <laughs> I've seen every Western that was ever made, and I found a family in California that still drives their cattle the traditional way, and I got this shot. Oh, that's beautiful. That's Thank you. great. Thank you. So you were starting out in landscape or doing that. You're probably doing this other all along, but, uh, you know, photographing cats. But what led you to develop cat snaps? Well, I love cats. I've had cats all my life. A few years ago, my mother injured her shoulder, her left shoulder, and wasn't able to use her left arm for a while. I moved in to help her. She had this old cat who was used to my mother lifting her up and putting her on high things. Now, the cat could do it herself. She was just kind of spoiled. So I started to teach the cat that she could jump up on the high things herself, and she needed a reward, so I'd give her a little kitty massage. And she would get to the point where she would come and get me, when she wanted to jump on something high, she'd jump up and I'd give her the little kitty massage. Well, I'm telling everybody about this. And some <laughs> photographer colleagues are saying, well, my goodness, why aren't you photographing cats? And I thought, gosh, why aren't I photographing cats? Yeah. So then I started. I got some training. I um, actually worked with Kristen Herrera at the Marin Humane Society. And she trained me on photographing shelter cats. I got an opportunity to work with the Peninsula Humane Society, photographing their cats, started off photographing eight cats a week, and that is the way to get trained. Every cat is different, a different room, different lighting conditions, and to date I photographed almost 400 shelter cats for the Peninsula wow. Humane Society. Wow. Well, now you uh, shoot on location and in studio, so I have to ask you, which environment do you like better, and how do you handle the difficulties that arise? I always offer studio as an option. I prefer to work in the home of the cat mm. in a studio situation. There are a lot of things you have to take into consideration. If a cat is coming into a new environment, they want to walk around and sniff everything. <laughs> and they have to check everything out before they ever settle down. If I've got another client coming in at a scheduled time, I don't know how long this first cat is going to take before they settle down. Some cats are really not going to show their, their true personality the first time they're in a new situation. And there's also a hygiene issue. We focus on this all the time at shelters, where we have to have fresh, clean cloths for every cat. If we, if, for, if we wanted to use that basket for another cat, we would have to take it and, and spray it with disinfectant and make sure it was completely clean. Wow. We've got to do the same thing in a studio situation. Mm. And so it's really many reasons why I prefer to go in home. You don't have all those extra problems to worry about. Well, that's right. That's right. <laughs> well, how long does it take you to assess a cat's personality? And do you have like a guide that you've made up for behavior and personalities? Do you have anything like that? Well, you have to know how to greet a cat. Oh. So the first thing is when you walk in, you drop down, you crouch low. You're, now you're down at the cat's level. Mm -hmm. Reach out your arm and your hands, but you don't move. You let that cat come to you. The minute they see you drop down, the tail goes up. They're looking at you, they're paying attention, and pretty soon they'll come over. Now, when they get to the point where they're rubbing their cheek against your, your hand, they've marked you. You're now part of their territory, mm. and now you're in. Wow. 
Yeah. How did you learn all that? <laughs> I, I, I read up on it. There's some annual the cat behaviorists out there, and they have these things on their blogs. And wow, yeah. that's that's yeah. pretty impressive. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, so have you ever had a cat that you just decided a model cat that just wasn't working? Have you ever had that problem? Not in the home environment. I always work with the owner, and so I think having them there makes the cat feel more comfortable. And I really believe that when both of us are focusing on that cat and trying to have fun and giving it treats, the cat is like, hey, I'm the center of attention here. This is fun, it's really positive energy. They always cooperate, they hang out, even the shy ones come out and show off. It's been amazing. Wow. We have had challenges in the shelter. That's a little more challenging. There were a couple times we really weren't sure we could get the cat out of a box where they were hiding or they were under a towel. But I think every time we were able to get at least one or two we could use. Well, you have to use the cats individually, right? You don't try to take group shots of cats, right? It's all individual? They're individual shots. Some of the cats live in a group setting where you'll have other cats around. We had one situation, and I really like cats, and they, I'm glad to say they really like me. So I always have to have a staff or a volunteer distracting the cat and playing with it. Otherwise, they come too close. And there was one time where this one cat insisted on sleeping on my shoulder. So I had the <laughs> one cat on here, the other one gets on my lap. So I'm holding the camera with one hand with this cat up here while the volunteer's over there getting the cat we actually wanted to shoot. That was, that was probably the most funny kind of so How long have you been doing this now? For four years. Four years. Yeah. Wow. Well, uh, the cats must know you then when you walk. Well, the cats aren't in the shelter that long, right? Fortunately not. That's good. That's, That's right. a good thing. That's right. <laughs> mm. And then I go in, I work with the cat once to get their photographs, and then I'm moving on to the next cat. Karen, on the other hand, as a TLC volunteer, she's working with the cats. As long as they're in the shelter, she sees them on a regular basis. Once a week? How often do you? I go once a week. Once there, are, a week. there are volunteers that go every day. Um, wow. You know, three, four times a week, um, but I'm once a week, and it's my therapy, and I think it's therapy for them as well, um, which is the whole point of what we do yeah. is to give them one-on-one -on -one attention. Well, do you work together with the photography? Do you ever ask for her uh, or try to hook up? I mean, are you guys good? And <laughs> well, I haven't worked with yeah. Karen. Um, uh, usually, I work with Rochelle, who is the webmaster and social media coordinator, but I often either work with staff or volunteers. I always have somebody working with the cat, yeah. Ah, so, well, it sounds kind of like a fun thing to do. So, uh, let's see some of your cat portraits. So you can tell us who they are, how old they are. Well, this is Velcro. This is a cat, for example. The owner was concerned that he's a very, very shy cat. We weren't sure that he would even be able to cooperate with the photo. Well, the minute we had a backdrop, his favorite seat out there, and we're giving them the attention, he sits up and poses. That cat sat there <laughs> until we decided to do something else. Velcro. He was a shelter cat, by the way. Wonderful kitty. Oh, beautiful cat. It's kind of a mixture, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. He's a handsome boy. And he is on my business card, by oh, the way. Oh, look at this guy. This guy is also <laughs> on my business card. She is a chocolate Lynx Point Balinese cat. Her name is Ava, after the Gabor sisters. This is, excuse me, this is Zsa, Zsa Gabor. <laughs> the next cat we'll see will be Ava Gabor. This is Ava, oh. they're sisters. And you can see why their family call them the beauty queens. <laughs> the next shot, this is Snowball as a kitten. He is a rag doll, which is a breed that is a mix of Persian and Siamese. This is, um, uh, he is the mascot for the Toast to Teal fundraiser for the Ovarian Cancer Research Fund. This cat's owner, Angela Moran, created the fundraiser, and the color theme is teal, which is why we're using that color here. Oh, neat. That's oh, neat. This oh. is our family cat, Coco. Uh, Rochelle at the Peninsula Humane Society had this great idea to do a Valentine photo shoot for the senior cats to try to get them some attention. So I kind of copied the idea and tried it with our cat at home. Oh. Uh, now, the tongue. How did you manage that? Well. <laughs> Coco always gets a treat when she does what I want her to, and I just, I just do a rapid fire and happen to get it. <laughs> this is a ranch cat, Zoe. Zoe is also a shelter cat. She lives up, lives up in the Santa Cruz Mountain, and with all these cats, she was featured on my Cat Snaps website as Cat of the Month. Oh, mm. really cute. And this is Nemo. He was nine months old in this shot, another shelter kitty, and a wonderful, his, his parents, 
his parents, his owners <laughs> went away for the weekend. Parents, his owners went away for the weekend. They're laughing when they see this, and they asked me to house it for them. So I got all these photos of Nemo, and they were very interested interested to see what he was doing when they weren't there. <laughs> oh, and what was he doing? Well, right now, right now he's just bird watching. So he, but he did climb up some drapes. This is Sixer, and um, Sixer was a shelter cat at the Humane Society. He, um, this was part of the Valentine, Valentine shoot that we did, and. He um, came in July 2014. I, I took his intake photo. He was still there in January, so we decided to take this one too. And his family sent in a letter later talking about how happy they were to have this cat. They said that when they saw this photo of the cat, they thought any cat that would deserve a photo shoot this important had to be a wonderful cat. And I remember this cat. He, he really had a great mm -hmm. personality. They said that <laughs> Uh, they took him home. They renamed him Big Sur. They said it's okay because it's close to Sixer. And they said that adopting that cat, they knew, was a defining moment in their own lives. This cat has really impacted them. Wow. In a very positive way. Oh. And this is one of the many oh. shelter kittens that we oh. photograph every year. Wow. Look at those blue eyes. Is yeah. this calico cat right here? Or what is this think? one? I don't know. Is that a calico? Uh, I don't know how you Some kind of a tabby, tabby maybe? Tabby, yeah. probably. Yeah. Adorable. Adorable. Yeah. So our friend over here is taking a, a little bit of a siesta, it looks like, and very comfortable. Um, so what, what is this cat's name? Hi, sweetie. What this is, is this Lindsay. Lindsay. Lindsay is seven years old. Oh. She's a, a tortie. Um, sweetest tortie. little girl. A, I'm sorry, tortie. So a tortie is Tor a tortoise. Kind of uh, a tortoise shell cat. Yeah. yeah. A tortie. Yeah. Okay. That's a new term for me. Which, <laughs> I hope I'm, I that's hope her getting coloring. This right. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's her, coloring. her coloring. But uh, she's the sweetest cat in the whole wide world. She's just um, super gentle. Um, at seven years old, still loves to play with her toys, um, which is a big thing that we do. Each cat has their own little toy box and um, toy bag. And we spend 20 minutes, 30 minutes with well, each cat. Well, that's your job now, uh, a TLC volunteer. So your job is to play with the cat. Is to play How or... important is that? And tell them what TLC so, means. Tender love. Oh, I, I, I think yeah. most of people know that one. But, but it's I, so important to yeah. um, have one-on-one -on -one time with the cats because the majority of the time they are like this, either a condo or a cage. So with the volunteers, um, we come in and usually it's about 20 minutes to 30 minutes and usually we'll take them to, it's called um, a get acquainted room, which is a much larger room for them. Sometimes I'll spend 30 minutes watching the kitty jump up on the windowsill. <laughs> um, sometimes it's 20 minutes in my lap and 10 minutes playing. Um, it's what they want to do. It's mm -hmm. their time. And it is important. Well, I can imagine with, uh, with having kittens, like you, we were supposed to have some kittens, but they all got adopted, which is wonderful. I'm happy for them, but um, not Lindsay. So what about the older cats? Do you have a, a harder time playing with them, keeping them involved? Do you treat them the same? I mean, um, how friendly are they to you? They're super friendly, mm. yeah. And there is someone for every cat that's in there. And it's amazing. I come in once a week, every Saturday, and I see a list of 15 to 25 cats, kittens, that are adopted every week. And it just wow. amazes wow. me. Because there is that one person for everyone. Um, a lot of the older cats go with um, the older couples and the kittens go with the, the little kids, you know, or vice versa sometimes. Well, now, you were telling me earlier that Lindsay has been there since January. She has. She yeah. has. Um, she's had a lot of attention and the, the right... She's a TV cat now. She is. I mean, she is. She <laughs> will get a forever home. <laughs> and look so how relaxed calm. this cat is. She's she so has calm. been Very so relaxed. relaxed. She has been purring since she's been on the TV set. That's yeah, a relaxed that's cat. Yeah. Oh, she's adorable. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, we have a video of Coco, and you're training Coco. But before we show the video, um, tell us a little bit about Coco. Coco is a former shelter cat as well. My mother adopted her from the Marin Humane Society an adorable cat, and I had heard that you could train a cat. So I'd heard you clicker train them, and I got a clicker, and I read up on it. And there's a, a process you have to, when you click, 
teach the cat and associate it with their reward. And in, in Coco's case, she loves to eat. So <laughs> we, she learned early that if she heard that click, it meant she was going to get a treat. Then once that association is made, you click during the behavior you want to reward. And pretty soon they figure that out. And then I started working with Coco. And we've taught her how to reach up and touch a spoon. Well, now we're working on getting her to go through a hoop. Oh, let's uh, see some of that. Yeah, let's see the yeah, video. Yeah. I can't wait to see this. They're cute. <laughs> Here she is. She always shows up when I'm setting things up before we practice. This time she got on the chair before I was done moving it, and she hung on for the ride. <laughs> and she knows how to touch that spoon. When you're training a cat, you always reward them after each trick. And one time I forgot to give her the treat, and she <laughs> sat and would not move until she got that food. And then she continued. So once she gets a treat, she's ready to go again. They say when you're teaching a cat, after you've given them the, the treat, wait for them to look up at you and make eye contact again, and then go forward. And if they don't look up at you anymore, it probably means they're done for the day. Mm. They have, some have said, well, cats have a short attention span. I don't think that's the case. I do think sometimes they get bored. Mm. Now, once mm. she's gotten used to this, she actually hangs in there for a long time. This particular se session, I think we went for more than 10 minutes. Yeah. And she would have gone longer if there had been more food. Mm. Now, I will say about Coco, she would gladly overeat if <laughs> she were given the chance. And we, we have to keep very, we have a set amount of food she's allowed to have every day. So no extra treats for the training. Mm -hmm. What I do is I time, <laughs> I time the practice sessions around a regular meal time. I'm just giving her her normal meal during the tricks. <laughs> and once in a while during this, you'll see that she knocks her food on the on the floor and she jumps down to get it and then she'll come right back up again. This tells me she really enjoys it. Now a year ago she wouldn't go through that hoop to save her life. And, really? No. And uh, oh. she's really come a long way and now she oh. seems very open to doing it. The stools are set slightly apart. I'm moving it just a little bit at a time. I'd like to get it to the point where she has to jump through the hoop. Mm. Mm. She's a smart cat. I'm not sure she's ever going to go for that. <laughs> but, um, but this part she really likes. There may be a point on here, too, where we see her offering some behavior. Oh, see, now she went down to get her food, and she's back up again. Look at that. Just yep. taking her time. Yep. Yep. She knows the hoop very well. I think we can <laughs> see that she's thinking about it. You know, that sometimes. Um... Now, oh, wow. when I edited this, I'm not including all the times I give her a treat. But I assure you, every time she touches that spoon, she gets a treat afterwards. The whole thing's on YouTube, right? People can see this. That's on right. That's right. On your this website, is, yes. they go the yeah, yep, sure. Yep, yep. You can see the whole thing because I, I just really enjoyed watching it. It's just a, um, <laughs> I enjoyed watching. I enjoyed watching you too. I thought oh. you were very well trained and very <laughs> graceful. <laughs> very graceful as you walked back so and we, forth. <laughs> we have been practicing this for four years, oh. and I must say that what happens is my mother goes away every year and takes a trip and I come and I house sit and then when my mom is gone we take over the living room and we take videos and we do photo sessions and we have a really good time some of it my mom really isn't doesn't know we do and well now she does because she's going to see this show but, <laughs> but surprise so we so we were practicing this all week long um, and yeah so by this point she really knew what she was doing yeah. Well, I've, I've just been trying to figure out how are you going to go to the next level. You can try moving the, the stool, but I'm thinking that you have to raise the hoop. There you go. <laughs> Why didn't I think of that? Thank well, you. Well, I used to train dogs, not cats. Not, <gasps> no, is, not cats. That is. You need we'll to raise, raise the, hoop. the hoop. Okay, that's yeah. what we'll do. Raise, because, see, she's very comfortable just walking over now, there. And, and I'll tell you. Oh, a while back when I first started her on this, she wasn't going through the hoop. So I put a little food on the black bench, and she didn't want to go through the hoop, so she reached under it and grabbed the food and pulled oh, it back. Oh, she? <laughs> she's too smart. Very yeah. smart. And when, well, she's got you trained very well. <laughs> <laughs> when she's done, she gets to lick the bowl, and the fact Aww. that she's staying on the stool afterwards tells me, I think that she really associates it with something she <laughs> enjoys doing. So oh, there she goes. Very, very happy. And it's a very cute video. Thank but you. I am thinking that she yeah, probably have to raise the hoop. Yes. Be because she needs to, you know, get out of her mold, I would think.
Well, on another topic, uh, that's just adorable. Thank you Thank for you. sharing that. <laughs> but you're also an award-winning uh, writer. Yes. And we just so happen to have a magazine here. So. And I talked about how much I love westerns. Mm -hmm. And I'm photographing this California ranching family who has been driving their cattle the traditional mm -hmm. way for 125 years from Yosemite down to the Central Valley. Mm -hmm. I've been following them around. And this is their daughter, the Alyssa girl. Erickson. She was four years old, and that was her first cattle drive. She's a doll. She's she just a, is a doll. Four. Four yep. years old. Yep, four years old. And she's not holding the, what do you call that, the thing. You know. She's not, that's right, she's not holding the, sh the horn of the saddle. Thank she's, you. That's right. <laughs> she's got the rope in her hand. She's the real deal. Wow. Yeah. So uh, tell me about the, uh, the awards that you got. So this was the first article with photos I ever had published for Western Horsemen. It was a dream come true. They made it their feature story. They put this shot on the cover. A year later, the American Horse Publications Association gave me first prize, best freelance writer for the article. And some of the images, we saw the cowboy image before that won third place in the national awards. Oh, wow. And last week, that's great. Uh, it was, how, what can I say, it was incredible. And then last week I got notified that for another article that I wrote, I was nominated again. This year, so far I'm placed top five, again, best freelance writer, best feature story, wow. two best editorial photos. And that's a story about a local lady rancher. She lives in the Santa Cruz Mountains. Diane Forbes has been raising champion Arabian horses for 50 years while working with the Early Space Program and the Mercury 7 astronauts. Wow. wow. So what a cross story. fingers, I'll know in story. June how that goes. Oh, that's awesome. Thank awesome. you. Well, getting back now to our friend here, um, what would you like people to know about adopting? What should they know or consider before they decide to adopt a cat? You want to say? Or well, I mean, definitely it's a family thing. Uh, you definitely have to make sure that everyone's in on it, um, that they're prepared to make some adjustments. And, uh, you know, it's going to take a little time for both the, the cat and the family to unite together. Um, so it's a patient thing, a, a patient process. Um, the, the staff at the Humane Society is fabulous. Um, one of the things that we do as a volunteer is after each visit that we have with the cat, we write and write about their behavior. So when you're ready to adopt one of the cats, you have their whole history of how they've been acting. Mm -hmm. So that's very helpful. So it's... So um, people should not get a cat when they're going to go on vacation soon, right? Or, or maybe it's holidays. Maybe holidays is not a good time, right? I would consider, I've heard that before. The timing is, a really is everything. Timing. Yes. That's a really good point. Yeah. Also, when you're thinking about adopting a cat, there are some realistic things to consider. There's a cost involved in having a pet. You've got the regular food, toys, bedding, vets. vets. Are you going to have to pay for a, a cat sitter when, you're, when they're going away? And then also remember that cats live on average 15 to 20 years. It is a commitment. Sure, sure. And anything special about adopting an older cat that people should know? They're the same as a younger cat. Um, basically, hmm. the, the same kind of love that you're going to give. They, the younger cats have more energy. Um, the older cats are going to relax a lot more and stay in your lap a lot more. <laughs> yeah, you don't have to go through that beginning stages, I would imagine. As you like would with the, the potty kid. training and all, you know, the, the tearing up the socks or exactly. whatever. I don't imagine you have to go through that. Is there anything else that you would like the public to know about all the what cat, you do or, or, or you cats know. in general? Yeah, just some tips, you know, from the. General things about society. <laughs> well, so there's some general cat tips and facts about mm -hmm. cats that they would share, which is that statistically, on average, cats that are kept as indoor cats do live three times longer. Oh. And they, oh. and we always hear, yes, you want to spay and neuter the cats. They're which, also yeah, no, which is a good thing about the Humane Society. Mm. They do have them already microchipped um, and or spayed or neutered. So you so don't have to do that. It's all it's included all when you take the exactly. cat home. That's right. nice to know that yeah. you don't have to go out and do that. So and then like, maybe something for new owners to know about cats. You know, you get the cat home. If it stops using its litter box, that usually means there's some kind of stress. If you don't think there's a stress around the house, then take them to the vet. Just make sure there's not a medical concern of some kind. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, one thing that's been intriguing me here is this 
this picture here of the typewriter. So tell us what this is about. So this is our family cat, Coco. And you know that I've already taught her to reach towards the spoon. So I'm off camera behind that typewriter trying to get her to reach so that it looks like she's <laughs> proofreading her story. I am actually writing, I'm actually writing a story about Coco. And if you had a magnifier, you could see that the page in that typewriter is the first page of her story. It says Coco the shelter cat at the top. And it starts off saying, what does it say? Hello, I'm Cheryl. Coco, a most adorable cat. <laughs> And so are you like halfway through or are you, you're, how far along are you? So I actually went to the Cat Writers Association annual conference one year. So I quick finished a draft so that I could take it with me. Wow. And I have to go back through and do the final work. And So really... you have people already interested in what you're doing then? I do. I do. Oh, that's I great. Do. That's great. And are you illustrating it? Are you going to be with your f photography or? Well, that's an interesting discussion because I want it to be all the photos of Coco. I probably have six to, six to 8,000 <laughs> photos of her already. All my mom says is, what are you going to do with all these photos? <laughs> well, we could write a book and put the photos in there. And um, that's still what I would like to do. Yeah, I would, I would like to have her photos in there. Well, otherwise, somebody would have to draw them. And if they did, <laughs> or illustrate them, or... You know, if the publisher decided they wanted to illustrate it, then I would give them her photos to use as a base for it so we could really try to capture the essence of who she is. Mm. And by the way, this cat is allowed to go outside on escorted walks. Okay. So they're, it's safe for her, Whoa. and she made friends with a back, yeah, backyard squirrel. So we have photos of that. Oh, <laughs> friends. Friends. I'm surprised because, you know, I've had a lot of squirrels and they're not always friends, you this, know. This was an unusual <laughs> squirrel. There's a, there's a whole story there that might be another, but this squirrel was <laughs> sort of sickly and my mother gave it extra food and the squirrel got better. And so I think there was sort of a different relationship there. And then when Coco started going out, I have pictures of them almost touching noses. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Well, look at look at our friend here. I mean, she's so just just really, really. <laughs> but there's just no way she wants to come out, even with the treat. She's just so happy in there. She thought about bringing her out. Yep. <laughs> oh well. <laughs> um, that's okay. She doesn't have to. On this show, it's a very laid back, relaxed type show, right? I think she knows that she's closer to the camera on that side of the cage. I think mm. you're right. This is a very polished. Well, kitty. there's there's a particular crewman here that mm. she's very attached to, too. I would say. <laughs> so she's just very comfortable. And um, I just want to thank you both for being thank here. You. I mean, it's just uh, a thrill to have a live cat on this show and also to hear about your work there with the Peninsula you. and your work, especially a TLC volunteer. That's pretty cool. Thank you. And so thank you both for being here. And Julie, your photographer is really, really nice. And uh, thank your you photography so is great. So um, people can um, see more details there on the website. And um, thank you for watching the show. Watch again. And don't forget the kitties out there. There's a lot of them out there that need a home. <laughs> so let's see, this magazine here now, you had another picture inside here. Let's see.